Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing Insights brought to you by NABTRADE. What are the market doomsday scenarios and how worried should you be? Joining me is Peter Switzer. Peter, when we talk about doomsday, just define doomsday for me. Yeah, it's not Great Depression stuff. We're talking about a market crash mm-hmm. um, could fall 20, 25%. It would be serious and, and there would be a lot of uh, consternation, uh, but it would probably lead to even to a recession. But it's not like a Great Depression where you'd see long unemployment queues and serious um, collapses of business. Okay, we're talking about the scenarios really for a market crash. Just what's interesting also about when crashes finish, typically the largest of the leading stocks, they bounce the hardest, yeah. don't they? When people sell off, they don't discriminate. But once the sell-offs happen, the smarties start seeing, for example, the banks at really low prices, they tear into them. They're the ones that really rebound the quickest. Okay, let's go into some possible scenarios. The first one is no trade deal. Donald fails on that. Mm, yeah. China that's, and the US are trade war continues. Yeah, that's my biggest worry. Um, I think he will go for a trade deal, but if it doesn't, a lot of people like me will be disappointed, fund managers, and they could actually cut their losses and go into a very defensive mode. That would really hurt the stock market. And that arguably would link to the global recession correct, scenario, right? Correct, correct. And that would mean that business investment that's being held back doesn't happen. If business investment doesn't happen, you don't get the growth, that's recession. Okay. Brexit, are you worried about Brexit? Uh, not really. Uh, I, look, I'd rather it not be there, um, but I do think that there's going to be wins and losses both in the UK and Europe. I think there's probably been an, an exaggeration in terms of the potential losses, and maybe in the real world it won't be as bad as we expect. So even if a no deal or a hard Brexit, that's not the end yeah. of the world as the, far the, as The you're. first reaction won't be good if it's a hard Brexit, but I still think they'll find over time it's not as bad as they thought. Okay. We've seen a huge rally in, in the US, particularly in some of the tech shares. Yeah, so mm. add the Apples, Amazons, Netflixes, the Fangs, the fangs mm. and so on. Yeah. A bit of a bubble. Is the bubble bursting there an issue? Well, look, they're overpriced and they will fall heavily. But it's nothing like the dot-com bust of the early 2000s. These companies actually have revenue, don't they? Correct. The difference they're between... real business where it was all blue sky in the dot-com era. Okay, a lot of talk about ETFs, particularly around uh, Burry, who's the guy involved in the big short coming out and mm. warning about the dangers of ETF. Is an ETF-led sell-off, is that a sort of scenario for a crash? I think the ETFs could actually increase the volatility. So we might go down faster, but then you, we would go up faster. The one thing I will say that if you're an exotic ETFs, when a crash is on, you could lose your whole money and it, it might not rebound at all because the fund manager could be just up completely underwater. Okay, the one that perhaps gets the most traction is talk around some sort of a debt crisis, Mm. uh, which is leading to some sort of systemic financial credit crunch. Um, Do you want to explain that? that, That is one of my big worries because it's kind of like you can't work it out. We know that the level of indebtedness, both for households and for governments, is historically high levels. So you just don't know what's going to happen. And I kind of link it to the, a black swan event. That's something you can't actually see happening. But when it does, you say, gee, why didn't I see that? Now, but when, when normally when you have debt crisis, it's usually a coincides with interest rates going up. Interest mm. rates have been going down. Correct. So is this really that sort of big well, an issue? Well, the, the one reason why I, I worry less about this is that the central banks are right in the middle of the problems now. Usually they're asleep at the wheel mm-hmm. and, a, and a market crashes. That's the big wake-up call. Then they cut interest rates and start doing stuff. Central banks, for the first time, are actually in the middle of this mess and are trying to help it with QE and negative interest rates and whatever. And that makes me think this bull market can be stretched out as a consequence. So your take is that if it happened, it would be a real big issue, but yeah. the likelihood of it happening is perhaps Correct. is pretty low. But I still wouldn't just dismiss it as being a, an issue. Okay, let's go to some couple of political ones. We've yeah. got China problems in Hong Kong, yeah. the Chinese government. If Hong Kong erupts, is that is that? A it new? worries me. I don't know what the Chinese would do. I don't think they can tolerate uh, intransigence for too long. But if that if that happened, they rolled trips into Hong Kong. The Trump response would be a worry. The market could really get spooked, and that could be a trigger. And we, we always know about the Middle East and the Iranian conflicts, and mm. so we've seen it recently with the oil oil challenges there. Yeah. Middle East still a hot spot? Yeah, I, I wasn't worried about until the, the drone attack, uh, but looking at the Saudis' response, they reckon they're going to be up and operating back to normal pretty quickly. It's always a worry, but I'm kind of used to it. It's, it's a lower order worry, I think. And one that got a lot of coverage here last year in Australia was the so-called housing market bubble. Yeah. We've had... We've House prices came off. They yeah. sort of seem to have steadied. Yeah. Is that really a big a big uh, uh, issue? Yeah, less of a worry now. Uh, interest rates have been cut. Banks are lending more. House prices are starting to you know rebound, not to the, the boon level, but 
the, the, the worries around that are less of an issue right now. And then we mentioned the black swan, which, of course, is something we can't foresee. That's why it's a black swan. Yeah, and, and it would be if a, if a major European bank collapsed and, and no one expected that kind of thing would be a real worry. So let's sum it up in terms of how worried you should be. We've rated sort of those scenarios in sort of the more worried category and the less worried. Exactly. The no trade deal and global recession is perhaps number one. Number one without doubt. Uh, we've got the challenges with Hong Kong, a financial credit crunch linked to debt, and of course the black swan, which is a scenario we just can't foresee. Yep. Brexit we don't think is a big issue. Australian housing market crash we don't think is a big issue. The tech market bubble we don't think it's. It'll make things worse. But I don't think it'll cause yep. the, the problem. A bit like an ETF led sell off. It could make it, it make it worse, but perhaps not be the cause of the crash. Yep. And the Middle East, of course, is always out there, but yeah. uh, at the moment, uh, not really in the too serious yeah. count. And at this point in time, I'm not worried about any of it actually happening. But that's the way I would rate my worries if I was forced to to name them. That's it from Switzer Investing Insights, brought to you by NAMTrade.